Hey everyone, it is National Signing Day, this early National Signing period starting today. And of course, we have with us our football recruiting expert, Otis Kurt, who has been working since the early hours of the morning, getting everything together for Arkansas's 2023 signing class. And Otis, coming together pretty nicely, got a few surprises, got kids that uh, Arkansas knew they were going to get. And uh, and so it's shaping up nicely. Let's break it down here. And I, I've got your list. If you haven't seen it, Otis has put together a great article on Hogville with each guy individually. And so uh, yeah. if you haven't checked that out, check that out. But of course, we will go through that list, Otis, one by one. And I think we can start today with cornerback Dallas Young out of Gardendale, Alabama. Yeah, you know, one well, kid that committed to Arkansas pretty, pretty early in the process. He actually committed to Arkansas about a day or two before I was leaving to drive to Tampa last year for the Outback Bowl. I remember exactly when he committed. It was the, uh, yeah, he committed. Like I said, I was getting ready to leave the next day or two, and he committed, and uh, and uh, I was joking with him that I might be driving through Gardendale. I knew I was driving through Alabama. I didn't know what, where Gardendale exactly was, but uh, I told him I was going to come and see him. But uh, now I uh, – so I remember that way. A cornerback who can really flat out play. I mean, I think he can help immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's one of three kids from Alabama, and I didn't expect them to do that well in Alabama. I don't, I don't think it had anything to do with the coaching change at Auburn because these kids were committed when Harson was there. So I, it's right. not like they got three kids late. Like I said, these kids have been committed for a while, but if you'd asked me last year at this time, would they sign three quality players out of Alabama? I probably would have said no, yeah. but Dallas is someone who can, I think he's, I think he can contribute pretty quickly. Uh, unless I really do. He's, they signed several defensive backs and if anybody saw him play this year, they know they need them and, uh, yeah. not a knock on who stayed, but you know, they they need numbers there. Yeah. I think mean, they need numbers. They need more talent. Uh, they just need better players back there <laughs> than some of them. Now, some of them are, you know, but, you know, like Quincy McAdoo Dwight McLaughlin and those kids, Hudson Park, they're fine. But they, there's some need for more talent back there. And you're losing guys like Latavius Brenny and, yeah, you know, Catalan. Catalan. Yeah. yeah, Slusher. So, so sure. I mean, yeah, you need numbers back there. Yeah. So, yeah. they got a lot. And, and they'll get more out of the portal, too. Right now, they've only got. We'll talk about him in a few. That was the one surprise day was a defensive uh, kid out of the mm -hmm. portal. Bye -bye. I can't talk. I've been it's up okay. to the list. So yeah, I mean, no, you're good. You're good. We understand uh, you've been working but, uh, hard. No, I mean, I, I was just thinking they got one defensive player so far out of the portal, and that was today, and that was a surprise. But I think what I was getting at is there'll be some more defensive players and, and especially defensive backs. Now that, uh, you know, the defensive coordinator has been hired, they had yeah. – they had John Morgan the third in last weekend, and they were supposed to have like seven or eight kids, and and they were defensive players for the most part, and they all bailed on them except for John. Mm -hmm. And he he came in and uh, you know, and gave him a fair shot with the new coordinator coming in, and kept an open mind. And he was certainly glad he did. You know, yeah. he yeah. told me I'm a big time player, and it's a big time place on a big time stage, and that's what I want. Yeah. And so. Yeah, you know, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll talk about him more too. Moving on yeah. to uh, Carrollton Hebron linebacker, uh, which is also in that Dietrich Wise's uh, high school. That's where Dietrich Wise uh, Dietrich went to. Dietrich Wise, Zach Rogers. Yeah, yeah, they, a lot, a lot of maybe football some talent more. out of this high school. Yeah, maybe some more. But I know uh, Wise and and uh, Zach Rogers yeah. were there. Absolutely, and, good, and, good point. <laughs> there yeah. you were. Yeah, those two got, I know for sure, and I think there may have been some others. But yeah, uh, they got uh, linebacker Carson Dean. And so another defensive guy you hope has that kind of talent. Well, he's 6'4", 235. And I'm going to tell you who he reminds me of. The fans will like this. He reminds me a lot of Drew Sanders. Mm. He was a rush, more of an edge guy like Drew was. And they're going to move him to stand-up linebacker at Arkansas the same way they did Drew. So I think fans will really like this kid. He's uh, he's really good. He's, very, he's like I say, 6'4", 235. All the linebackers we're going to talk about today are SEC size. They're not bringing in the 6'1", 190-pound ki kids that need to go in the weight room for two or three years. These are big-time linebackers that have the size. I'm going to tell you, these kids, I've seen all three of them in person. The only kid on this list that I have not seen in person, and I don't mean play it, 
I'm talking about just seeing them in person, is Davion, Davion Dozier, the wide receiver. Uh, I was actually in the hospital when he visited, so I have not seen him. But the rest of them I've all seen in person. And these are three linebackers that look like they're supposed to look. They look like what you played against, including uh, Carson Dean. I mean, that's what these kids look like, You the ones you get, the Alabama, Georgia, LSU, Auburn, Tennessee, yeah. and those schools have been – getting to all the time arkansas is starting to get those you know yeah. i don't know what's going to have with michael sure but i'm going to tell you what he upgraded arkansas linebacking talent i kept hearing for years oh they can't find linebackers the big ones in the state played down on the lines hey michael michael went out and found him like i, said, I don't know what's going to, if he's going to be here if he's going to be at unlv but wherever he is he did one heck of a job recruiting here and coaching but i mean he deserves credit for a lot of it. Yeah, you love to hear that. One kid out of Arkansas's own backyard was Joey Sua out of Bentonville, and he <laughs> signed with Arkansas actually on wet, or Monday. He had a ceremony yeah. up at his high school. Yeah, officially today, but yeah, he had a ceremony. A lot of them did. Uh, all these kids, well, not all of them, a lot of them had previous ceremonies. Dean did too, I think on the 15th. Uh, so I'm, here's what I'm going to say about Joey. I think he's the most... Uh, he had under underrated in the state in the national rankings. He's a three star, and why I don't know because he's not even a high three star. This kid, I've had a high school coach in the state of Arkansas who's been here for a while and played against a lot of good talent. Told me he's, he's probably as good as he's ever coached against in this state. I mean, I've seen mm -hmm. the kid play. I have no idea why he's rated for he is. This kid is, should be a four star. He is really. Good, Alyssa. I mean, six four, three twenty, uh, just just can dominate. And uh, you know, he's a uh, he's somebody you want on the team. And uh, and Arkansas did a good job. This kid moved here. He got they got they got lucky in a sense. He was from California, and they moved to Arkansas. His mother has a job with Walmart executive, and they would have never gotten him otherwise. Because one of his interests, main interest, was staying close to home where his parents could see. Yeah. So Arkansas really, they owe Walmart one on that one because without Walmart, without them moving here, they would have never gotten this guy, I don't think. And so well, you love that his up. ceiling is so high. Yeah. Oh, he's, yeah. he's one Cody Kennedy can take and really develop into a great offensive line. I, I think, he, like I said, I think he's right there right now, but we'll see. I mean, you know, he's got some, he, obviously it's, it's going to be different playing. SEC opposed to Bentonville 7A, but, uh, you know, but in time, he's going to be a really good offensive lineman for the Hogs. I believe that with all my heart. I think he's very underrated with the recruiting services on nice. a national scale. Yeah, absolutely. One of those linebackers, again, that you were talking about, Alex Sanford out of Oxford, Mississippi. So picking him out of <laughs> Ole Miss's backyard coming to play yeah. for Arkansas. He moved there from uh, – Wisconsin, I believe, Alyssa. I believe if it wasn't Wisconsin, it was Michigan. I had that story, but it's been back in the summer, but I believe it's Wisconsin. So he had no ties to Ole Miss, and, but they did offer. I mean, they wanted him badly, but uh, Alex is truly one of the kids that fits what I was talking about that looks like the kids they've been playing against. He's 6'3", 240. He played an All-America game last weekend along with uh, – he played an All America game along with Quincy uh, uh, Quincy Rhodes from North Little Rock, and and this kid's six three two forty, and he stood next to Quincy Rhodes, and he looked tiny. You know, it was such a weird picture. I put it on Twitter. It's just he makes it took Quincy Rhodes to make uh, uh, you know uh, him this look kid small. Looks small. He's, yeah, <laughs> Alex looks small, but he's not. And yeah. uh, but he's six three two forty. Once again, he had a lot of offers. People asked me about the Ole Miss connection. Like I said, he moved up from Wisconsin, had no ties to Ole Miss, was not interested in them so much. I think Auburn probably – probably Auburn would have come in second if, if you know, that was the other school. I think – he had a lot of offers, but mm -hmm. I think Auburn would have been the school he yeah. would have gone to had he not come to Arkansas. It wasn't going to be Ole Miss. He just – he told me he just didn't – you know, he said, I, I don't have any ties to that school. Sure. I'm not from Oxford originally. And – I, he's only lived there a couple of three years, so I mean, he just didn't, you know. Yeah, that makes that makes sense, and and Arkansas yeah. fans happy to have him. Dipping back into the state of Texas, down in Houston, Blind Force <laughs> linebacker, another guy, Brad Spence, as you mentioned, <sighs> a big guy, six three, two twenty eight, according to your notes. Yeah. Well, 
you know, and I had a high school coach down there, evaluator, tell me this kid reminds him of Micah Parsons. And I don't know if Ooh. any more needs to be okay. said. I don't know if anything else needs to be said. I mean, no. I don't know how you could compliment somebody better than that. And this was not an Arkansas fan or somebody tied to Arkansas. This was just a guy who evaluates prospects and, and coaches and does a little <laughs> bit of everything. And he knows talent. And he told me this kid reminds him so much of Micah Parsons. That's him saying that, not me. But I do know he's a very good linebacker in Arkansas. Uh, California was there. Uh, I think Texas. A lot of schools tried to get him. I know Cal was strong on him. And uh, he's got a younger brother who's going to be really good, Alyssa. He's one of, the, one of the kids. Yeah, and, and Arkansas offered him, too. He's a 10th grader. He's another. Okay. And, and Brad is like Carson Dean. He's an edge rusher in high school. They're going to put him up there like Bruce Sanders, like, you know, and they may play those kids kind of like Dallas does Micah where they move them around and stuff. But Brad is another edge rusher who they're going, they had a lot of success doing that with Bruce Sanders and they've appealed to these kids that maybe are 6'4", 235, 6'2", yeah. 225, 230. That's not going to get you in the NFL, but that's great size for a linebacker to start with. So yeah. that's what, they're selling and, and they and these kids see they're not blind they see the success that drew sanders had Alyssa, yeah. and they know they did that with him they could do that with me you know everybody thinks drew sanders you know he was five star and he came from alabama and they think you know he did great he had one sack at alabama right. he came here he had one sack at alabama jordan dominic had i think nine or nine and a half at georgia tech they see what arkansas did with these kids yeah Alyssa. i mean Jaden Hazelwood played three years at OU and almost matched his. He had 50, uh, 62 catches in all those years at OU. He caught 59 yeah. here this year. So yeah. Arkansas yeah. has made these. Well, they, have, they, have, they have the track record now to prove on to kids John on this recruiting Morgan trail. Me, he yeah. said they pulled out that list and showed me what they yeah. did with these kids. And he yeah. said a lot of people don't want to talk to a kid like me. It's only got one year to play. And he said, Arkansas did. And he said, not only that, he showed me what they did with Bruce Sanders, you know, Hazelwood, Landers, the kids that only had one year. Well, I mean, they had more than uh, Landers and Hazelwood. I mean, uh, Sanders and Hazelwood could have played more than one, but they played right. so well, they were on the NFL. So, right. and, and to me, that's a plus. And now yeah. Landers is out of eligibility. But, yeah, but, yeah, uh, all those linebackers, you've mentioned all three. Yeah. And that's yeah. as good a group of linebackers as I've seen Arkansas sign. And I don't. Honestly, I don't know if they've ever, since I've been doing this, which is a hundred years, I don't know if they've ever signed a better group of linebackers as a whole on paper. Now they've got to come here and do yeah. it. Obviously, I mean, you know, it, but I'm talking about on signing day. I don't think I've ever seen an Arkansas class with three linebackers co combined as good as this three. I'll that's exciting. That. Yeah, that's exciting. Well, hey, paper, talk about. But we'll yeah. see. Talk about elevating a room. I, I saw this tweet, and I retweeted you because I thought you were on point. The quarterback room about to be elevated substantially with the addition of Malachi Singleton and Jacoby Criswell coming in. We'll, we'll group those two together. Talk about yeah. Malachi and signing him, and then Jacoby Criswell coming home back to his home state of Arkansas well, out of North Carolina. Yeah, he was at Moralton, the Gatorade Player of the Year, talking about Criswell. Uh, uh, you know, I will say this, and you don't want KJ to get hurt, but I do think if KJ gets hurt in 2000, or 2023, you won't see the drop off as near as much as you saw this year. Yeah. And uh, both of those, yeah, this is going to be the best quarterback room I've seen in Arkansas in many years. It's, uh, and with KJ, Jacoby, and Malachi, you're talking about three kids. They can really, and they're all going to get better. KJ's going to get better because he's going to have competition there. Wow. I'm not saying they'll beat him out. That's not what I'm saying. But he's going to have, they're good enough that they can push him, Melissa. Mm -hmm. and, and naturally, that makes everybody better. I'm exactly. not exactly. No, I, KJ. yeah, I think anyone wants, somebody wants breathing someone down to push your them. Neck. Absolutely. Yeah, you got somebody breathing down your neck, pushing you, you're going to get better. It, it, you know, I mean, in your job, my job, or any job, or quarterback, or any room, if you have people pushing, you're going to get better. So, yeah, I, I think he's uh, uh, a very – those are two really good pickups. Um, uh, I, that, you know, they had dropped off at quarterback recruiting other than Felipe Franks, but getting these two kids really elevates that room. I don't know what Cade Fortin's going to do, but, but uh, you know, they 
but they've got, you know, they've got three quarterbacks who can really play. Uh, you know, you hope Malik finds a place for him where he can have success. Yeah, and, yeah and uh, I believe I, he announced he's going to Nebraska. So hopefully he can okay. find some success there. I knew there. he visited there this past weekend. Mm-hmm. I haven't had time. I've Maybe. seen a few thought, of those. Yeah, I, I know. thought he made that announcement. But again, yeah, you, you wish the best did. for Malik, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's not a bad offense for him and uh, stuff. I know we're talking about Arkansas, but I do know a lot of those kids did announce for places. But, but I'm proud yeah. of this room here. I just think it's a lot better than what it was. That's, like I said, it's not a shot at these guys. It's just, it's just my opinion. Sure. And I think it'll bear it out. Jacoby, I felt yeah. like Jacoby. There were three kids they were on hard when he came out of high school. It was yeah. Jacoby, Chandler Morris, and Haynes King. And I thought I thought Jacoby was the best of the three. Now, with that said, I'm not taking a shot at Chad for recruiting his son. I get what he I get why he did that. And plus Chandler was a good quarterback. It wasn't mm-hmm. like he couldn't play, you know, or it's just dad just saying, Hey, I want my kid. Chandler's a good quarterback. But so was Haynes King. And uh, but Jacoby, I felt like was the best of three. And Malachi, I talked to recruits. I talked to several recruits. I talked to Shamar Easter, Jaden Ham, Mike. I know a couple of they didn't sign with Arkansas, but I do all of them told me that Malachi is the best quarterback for Arkansas in this offense. You know, that they felt like he was perfect for this offense. I felt the same way. Really wanted to see him play, but he got hurt early this year and only played two games. But he's a good quarterback. Uh, Arkansas held off UCF for him. They, they I'm not going to say they held off Wisconsin for Jacoby. I think Jacoby and I have been talking since Thanksgiving, and uh, I knew he was coming here. But Wisconsin got the North Carolina offensive coordinator. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Yeah, offensive coordinator. They thought he was going to Auburn, and you, but he was going to work for you free. But instead, he went to Wisconsin. They yeah. had a coach. They had a surprise coach and hire there, yep. and he actually went to Wisconsin. So he tried to get Jacoby to go there. But Jacoby, I'm not going to say they'd be anybody. He came here. He could have gone to other places. Sure. But this, it meant a lot to Jacoby. Yeah. And he remembered, too, that Sam got hired late in the right. process, right before he signed with North Carolina. But Sam still went after him. Mm-hmm. And they parted on good terms. He was very respectful to Sam. He just said, I'm a loyal person. I've committed to South North Carolina. They've, they've been on me the whole time. I think Sam understood that and probably appreciated the fact sure. that the kid was loyal. I mean, it's hard to get mad at somebody that tells you I'm a loyal person. So, right. but, so they parted on really good terms. And Jacoby talked to me about this. And he said it, it worked out perfectly. And he said, you know, I, I'm a firm believer in Christ. And I think God intended for me to come back and play for the Hogs. And so mm-hmm. something to that extent. So yeah. uh, I'm not, but you know, so it's very good room, Alyssa, yeah. very good room. Yeah. Three outstanding quarterbacks. Sure. Absolutely. Moving on here. One of the best safeties in the state of Alabama. Got to love when you go get talent from such a hotbed in the sec yeah. TJ Metcalf. Yeah. He, and he's the other one. I told you, uh, 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 Brad Spence had a younger brother. It's been offered by the Hogs. So does TJ Metcalf. Actually, Tevis is in the is is a junior, whereas uh, Trent Spence is a sophomore. So Tevis should be. We may be talking about him on this show next year about the okay. same time, Elizabeth. We All may right. be talking about Tevis Metcalf. But TJ, we'll get back to him. He played in the Mississippi Alabama All Star game. I believe he had an interception. Played well. Uh, best safety in Alabama. Like I said earlier, they've got three players, Alabama, and uh, we've talked about two of them, and we'll talk about the third minute, but it's unbelievable the job that Scott Fountain, Kenny Guy, and, 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 and those guys did down in Alabama. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and uh, so it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. you know, Dominic Bowman helped out, obviously. So, you know, but it's just been a good year down there for them, and, that's somewhere you, great you don't really plan on getting two defensive backs out of Alabama, but they did. And then they got, like I said, a very good receiver who we'll talk about here in a few minutes. Yeah, I love it. Well, I'm going to group the twins together if you're cool with it. But, of course, I'm talking about yeah. tight end Luke Haas, which everyone was excited with a little bit of oh. tight end drama the last couple of weeks with Dell Loggins going to South Carolina. But then you also get DB, his twin brother, Dylan Haas, as well. And so it'll be exciting yeah. for the two of those kids to come yeah. over from Bixby, Oklahoma. Well, I tell you what, Luke is as good as it gets. I mean, I, he's as good as it gets. And I'm going to tell you, Dylan, <laughs> people think they took Dylan only because they had Luke. I'm going to tell you, Dylan can play. He's not a bad player, and he's, he's he'll help the Razorbacks. But Luke, I, honestly, 
I could see Luke, if he doesn't start next year, I could see him making a big contribution next season. I could see him start. It would not shock me if he starts. Now, with that said, you know, we don't know who all is coming back on the current team. We don't, I think they're going to get a portal tied in, yeah. you know, uh, Shamar Easter will know more in February the 1st. Right. Although I think if he doesn't sign early with South Carolina and he says he's not going to, or that was the last I've been told, then I think Arkansas will get Shamar in, in February, but we'll see. Yeah. But with Luke, I, I think he could start at tight end. I think he's as good as any tight end in the country. He was number one player in Oklahoma until he committed to Arkansas, and then they started dropping him down. And in and, and off seasons, like he hadn't even played another game, they won another state championship. But I'm going to tell you, he is as good as it gets at tight end. But uh, they had three committed, and I always doubted they would be able to sign all three. But uh, I know they thought they could, and they might have had not been the coaching change. Sure. But, uh, but uh, anyway, they got – a, st- a big time player in Luke Hayes. And then uh, Dylan, just a kid that can play uh, defensive back, wide receiver. He's going to play probably safety here. Where I really see him making a big impact too is helping on special teams and spot play in the secondary for a while. But uh, yes. I don't think he's quite as ready to make an instant impact as Luke is. But he's he's not a bad player. I, I think he's people don't understand he's a really good player that you would take on his own accord you know you don't have to depend on him being Luke's brother yeah yeah love that all right moving on here we've got uh, an offensive lineman which they knew they kind of had to kind of build that room back up to and Luke Brown yeah uh kid from Tennessee uh one of the top players in Tennessee I believe he's a four-star and Luke can really play came over here fell in love with the place if I remember, it was at a junior day, and I'm thinking he didn't bring his parents. That maybe he didn't bring his mother. Maybe maybe he just brought one parent. But anyway, he came back, and he came back with his uh, with his parents and wanted her to see Arkansas, and see them see Arkansas. He knew he was coming, yeah. and they signed off on it. He committed on the spot. So this is a kid that uh, Arkansas's got. And he's uh, about 6'5", 310 pounds, one of the best players in Tennessee. Didn't want to stay home. He wanted to come over here. And Cody Kennedy did a really good job on him, Alyssa. I think a very good job. He and Joey and then a uh, couple of kids we'll talk about later, they're really good players. I mean, these are big kids, too. They're not projects. These are big kids who are ready to plug in and, and contribute pretty quickly at Arkansas. That's good news. They need that yep, on that offensive line front. All right, you got a kid joining a really talented running back room. Jimmy Smith doing work over there, getting this Isaiah Augustave out of Naples, Florida. Yeah, this was a kid that a lot of people said, who? And they started recruiting him. And then about after they they started watching him play, it's like Arkansas won't be able to hold on to him. This is this kid is big time. He quickly shot up from a no name, no, no unknown three star to a Four star. Yeah. And everybody tried to get on me. Jimmy held him and did an incredible job holding on to him. This is this is a player who can come in and he's like some of these like I've said about Luke and a couple others. He can come in and play immediately. Yeah. I mean, I know and you've got AJ, you got Rashad there, and you got him. So you've got four, four outstanding running backs. I don't know what Dominic's gonna do. But anytime you have two ACL surgeries like he has, it makes it tough. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because he's a very good running yeah. back, too. But, but uh, you know, but Rocket's going to play one more year, and we all know he's going to NFL then. It's not a secret. So they need a running back, and they got a good one here. So, I mean, this kid, like I said, he was unknown at first. I, I, when I first put his name out there, people were asking me, who's that? Why are they <laughs> taking him? You know, and then before they, they went long. Until he shot up the right. He went to a few combines and mm-hmm. got out, got his name out there. He's from Naples, Florida, and people started thinking. Then you know everybody in the country and a lot they did come after him. But Jimmy Jimmy Smith and that's why I always tell people don't get hung up on big name hires. Jimmy Smith was a high school coach at what the what was it Georgia Southern Georgia State or somewhere and he came here. This guy's a great recruiter. He's not a good recruiter. This guy's a great recruiter. Hey, thank him for thank him for Jaden Hazelwood, right? Yeah, yeah, he coached Jake Nasewood, Rashad DeBinion. You yeah. know, I mean, he had ties to that school. Anyway. Jimmy Smith. But yeah, he coached Jay, uh, Jake Nasewood. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy Smith's a great Killing recruiter. It. He's not a good yep. one. To get this kid was outstanding, Alyssa. Yeah, I, I mean, love that. And he had competition, but he held him. 
All right, so this is one that kind of had some Razorback fans sweat just a little bit. North Little Rocks, Quincy Rhodes, and he uh, did commit to Arkansas, which is great news for Hog fans. But uh, a little, little questionable this morning, Otis. Yeah, it was. I mean, he took some Arkansas stuff. I, was, I went and saw him against Northside when yeah. they played during the bye week. Mm -hmm. I went to Fort Smith and saw this kid play. And uh, he's uh, he's the one I told you played in the whole America game. He stood next to the kid uh, from Oxford. And it made him look tiny. And if I hadn't seen that picture, go on my timeline on Twitter. I think it was yesterday I posted that or something. But it was, it was already on there, but I retweeted it. But you can see it. But he makes Alex Sanford look small. And, and Alex is not small. But uh, uh, Quincy's 6'7", about 263 pounds. Edge rusher and a kid that just moved over from Jacksonville for his senior year at North Little Rock. The move paid wonders for him. Arkansas got on him early. He didn't have very many offers at first. You know, OU comes in late, and other schools came in late, made a push for him. But uh, once he stayed solid, I, I've got him the number two player in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. I've got Joey Sue number three. I've got Shamar number one. So, you know, that's Arkansas, if they get Shamar, we'll have gotten the top three players in Arkansas. It's not just my list. That's, a lot of people have that list in that order. Some yeah. people, I saw one. Yesterday, they had Quincy number one and Shamar number two. Regardless, I mean, who's number one, who's number two, all these, all, all those kids can kids. play. Yeah, talented, talented and, kids yeah. in state. And you, lo and you love to keep them all home. Defensive end. Yeah. Six, seven defensive end. You, you can't let those kids go to OU and other places. When you get a kid like that in Arkansas, you need to keep him home. You, it's not going to turn out 20 prospects a year in state, like maybe Texas does for mm -hmm. the Longhorns, but it's still, when there's, talent here they can play and you got to keep those guys at home yeah. absolutely absolutely all right we got a couple more to talk about and i know we have Pittman at three he's gonna talk about this mm -hmm. signing class so we'll we'll whip through these guys you've got this wide receiver davion dozier and you talked about him earlier also yeah six four 195 Alyssa. he's the one kid i haven't seen in person but he's listed six four 195 i've seen them he can play he and andrew armstrong are gonna cause matchup problems for defensive because Andrew's 6'5", this kid's 6'4". So, I mean, yeah. you're talking about going against cornerbacks that, that are not that tall and uh, really believe this kid's going to be a good player for the Ravens. He's a one, another one maybe when they tuck him, some people wonder why, that he really blew up as a senior. I mean, he exploded as a senior. So, really good player. Yeah. Nice Twitter, pickup. Twitter over here telling us, or this Zoom over here telling us we're running out of time. <laughs> here we go. We're going to keep on keeping on, though, until they cut us out of here. Uh, how about this D-lineman, Ian Gefford? The big kid who can play offense or defense. He recruited to play defense. <laughs> kind of reminds me a little bit of John Ridgway in some ways. Okay. Uh, he's, pretty, he's not as fast as a Ridgway, but he's that type of player. You know, uh, uh, big kid who can plug the middle, Alyssa, stop the run up the middle, stop the stuff. He's an enforcer up the middle is what he is. And like I said, he can always move over and play some offense. He's another kid they beat Auburn to get. And uh, very good pickup out of Georgia. Mableton Whitefield Academy, I believe, is where he's from in Georgia. And uh, a very good player. All right, moving on. Another cornerback out of Texas and Jalen Braxton. What do you like about Okay, him? that's another big – that may be the number. <laughs> he, Luke Hayes, Shamar Easter uh, – Probably leave us Malachi. Those are probably the top players. I'm telling you, uh, Jalen Braxton is, he's another Quincy McAdoo. Mm -hmm. He can come in and make an instant impact at corner. I mean, an instant impact. He can do it corner what Luke can do it tight end. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's a big time cornerback, one of the best players in Texas, and a great pickup by the Razorbacks. I mean, a great pickup. He and Dallas Young and RJ Johnson are going to help that cornerback run big time. All right. Jalen is kid I love. Yeah, down the street in McKinney from Frisco, by the way. Jalen from Frisco, down the street in McKinney, you got safety Christian Ford. Yeah, he got hurt some his senior year, but he still had a good year when he played. But Christian came in the same weekend that uh, Jalen did, and they both fell in love with this place. They visited the same weekend and just simply fell in love with the place. So he's a good pickup there. Uh, Christian is six foot 185. Braxton's six foot one seventy, but uh, I think Ford will have a good future at Arkansas. Another kid from McKinney. I mean, you love those North Texas players. The yeah. fact that yeah. that Metroplex has been good to Arkansas through the years. We talked about Carson Day, and and it's going to continue to be good. There's a lot of talent down there in that area. 
Yeah, you love it. Some talent, too, in East St. Louis. You've got offensive lineman Paris Patterson, and that school turns yeah. out a lot of talent. Oh, yeah, every year, every year it's a football factory. He came to camp here. Arkansas offered him. He had It was down to LSU and Tennessee, and Arkansas offered him, and they moved ahead of both those schools, and uh, he stayed solid. And uh, but Paris is a big kid. I mean, a huge kid. I saw him at camp. Then I saw him when he came down. He came for the picnics that they have in uh, in uh, the end of what is that July? Yeah, the end of July. They have a picnic, and uh, he came down for that too. And uh, he's a really good looking player. He committed to Arkansas and stayed with them. And another player that Cody Kennedy got that can help eventually on that offensive line. He, these kids have the size. They're not projects that you have to put. Of course, they can put them in the weight room, get them bigger, faster, stronger, sure. But they're they they're got the size to start with. So you just got to kind of reshape the stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, my earpiece fell well, off. Well, no, there. I was checking. No, my, you're good. I'm getting pop up here. No, no, you're I'm good. You're good. All right. Twitter. Yeah, we we talked about one transfer already in Jacoby Criswell. Let's quickly talk about the other two. We've already mentioned in some of your shows a couple weeks ago. Uh, that Florida transfer Josh Braun coming here, big time offensive lineman get, but they also got Texas A&M Commerce wide receiver Amstru- Andrew Armstrong. And if you're not yeah. familiar with A&M Commerce, they're in the Southland Conference. Uh, but this is a kid who clearly has got talent to play on the SEC level. Six five one eighty nine out Dallas Bishop Don simply got overlooked in high school. Went there, blew up, had sixty two catches. 1030 yards and 13 Ooh. touchdowns this season. 65 189 and when I say 65 I'm talking about legit 65. He issued he was listed at 66. He told me I'm only 65. <laughs> I would have still listed him at 66 when I saw him cuz he he was big. I mean he's tall. And he's going you talk about mismatches for cornerbacks. This is going to be one. Uh Josh Bryan was a kid who was committed to Sam at Georgia. A lot of people may not know that, but he was he was committed to Sam Pittman when he was the offensive line coach at Georgia. Mm. Sam came here, Josh left Georgia, didn't leave Georgia, he left their commitment list and went to Florida. And he liked it there with Dan Mullen, but then Napier came in, and they didn't see eye to eye on their, you know, I think Napier wanted his own players, or even put him at tackle to him, and Brian goes, I'm a guard, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, he didn't want to comment anymore on that, but he, he wasn't big on the coaching change down there. He left the team, and then. As soon as he could, he transferred here or came here visiting and signed. Didn't take any other visits. He had he had a bunch of offers, but he told me he and his wife and mother were apartment hunting when they were here. And he told me, he said, "I don't want a big recruiting deal. Like go through the process, take a lot of visits. I did that the first time. I'm happy. This is what I want. And we found a I don't know if he found a house or apartment, but they found somewhere for he and his wife to live. Mother's a great person." And awesome. uh, it was just a great visit. And he signed here, and that was it. You know, he took one visit and shut it down. He, you know, he was kind of like Felipe Frank from Florida. Felipe told me the same thing, Alyssa. He said, I don't want a big do about recruiting this time. I've been through that process. I just want to make sure I don't make another mistake. I don't want to make a mistake. I want to go where I'm needed. And he said, Arkansas did. I didn't want to make a mistake. And Arkansas is not a mistake. And it's that- Felipe. And, and Josh both told yeah, me that. that. That's awesome. And then, all right, you talked about this, the Pitt defensive end and John Morgan the third, and a huge <sighs> get, a big surprise out of the portal today. Yeah, he threw me a uh, – <laughs> I, I did the signing, and I went to uh, Harps to get some – I went to the grocery store to get some, some stuff and uh, came back, and he had signed. He had told me he was signing after the national championship game. So, yeah, I was about five or minutes, minutes late on his story, but it's okay because our – and I – this kid in his career there had 14 and a half sacks, Alyssa. Like I said, Dominic had nine. Drew Sanders had one. I mean, this kid's a pass, elite pass rusher yeah. at Pitt. 6'2", 265. Visited Missouri, then came down to Arkansas and was going to visit Tennessee and Colorado, but he decided not to. And uh, uh, he decided not to visit. Well, obviously he decided not to. He signed with Arkansas today. So, yeah, but uh, Colorado and uh, Tennessee were on him hard, and other schools were. He he went to Portland, and had ten offers almost immediately, mm-hmm. uh, and, and those were four of the schools right there. So yeah. yeah, I love that. All right, last but not least, R.J. Johnson, a quarterback, and according to your notes, could play wide receiver if he wanted. Yeah, to. he could. He he played a lot of receiver there for them, but Arkansas 
uh, Coach uh, Bowman's recruiting him to play corner. Mm -hmm. But as I said, he's 6'3". And, and there again, you don't find a lot of 6'3 cornerbacks, Alyssa. Yeah. And, and I've seen him. He, he's legit. I mean, he may be 6'2 without shoes. I don't know if they play with shoes on, but he's listed <laughs> at 6'3", and I have no problem listing him there. And, uh, you know, and uh, sure. very good. Yeah, he came from Georgia, committed early. And then uh, he told me when he – he said, I will be back up there in about the next day he committed, you know, and, uh, you know, so he kept his word, but yeah, he, this is a very good class, Alyssa. I mean, I, I'm telling you, this is one of the best classes Arkansas has ever signed on paper. Yeah. And that's yeah. all we can talk about is you, on paper. Right. We, we can't talk about how they're going to turn out because we don't know. Yeah. But I can tell you on paper from the starting point, it's as good as, it's, it's one of the best I've ever yeah. seen at Arkansas. Definitely. Well, and you love to hear that. And I did see you tweet also that they're great people. Which is well, that, just as important. So you love that. I mean, too. That's the thing. Yeah, you can get great players, but a lot of schools don't get great people. And from great families, not just good kids, but they've got their parents are good people. These are good people. These are good kids and good families, you know. Yeah. And uh, I mean, Caleb James' mom, Luke Hayes' mom, or Luke and Dylan's mom. I mean, all these moms dads and stuff. You know, they're just great people, man. I mean, these are good people. And, uh, yeah, I just is it I think that's important. I really do. I mean, it's obvious you gotta have an SEC talent, but sure. but but you gotta, you gotta have, win you ball gotta games, but yeah, too, I, you, you, you love do. you love cover it's the kids that that are good kids that you remember for exactly. a really long time. Otis, exactly. always appreciate your time. Thank you for breaking down this class again. We hear from Sam Pittman at three. It's about yeah. two fifteen right now. So looking forward <laughs> to seeing what Sam says about that. But we appreciate your time in this twenty twenty three Arkansas class. Otis, thanks so much. Thanks for asking me, Alyssa. Appreciate you. Bye. Bye.